Hey everyone, and welcome to the final episode of this season of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. Hopefully the next season we'll continue on with construction documents and then building the project. But for now, if you haven't been following along, this is episode 18. And so you definitely want to check out episodes 1 through 17, where we started with actually existing conditions, worked our way through sketching design options, building some con conceptual Revit models to explore our designs, um, building conceptual Revit plans, and then adding detail and then creating a presentation. And now today we are going to present it to the client. So super exciting. Um, the client's names are Alicia and Mark. They're amazing clients. Uh, as I mentioned, I think in the first video, three, four years ago, I actually worked with them to uh, design and build their master bedroom suite in the same house. So this is sort of a continuation on, on that project. As I went back and sort of edited this um, Zoom call with them, uh, it was kind of interesting to, to pick apart uh, a few months later uh, a, a Zoom call. And, and if you guys have never recorded yourself presenting to clients, it's actually kind of an interesting exercise but uh, one of the things uh, a couple things I picked out um, that I want you guys to pay attention to as you go through this other than just sort of hopefully you're just kind of interested in seeing uh, this this whole process unfold um, is how I use these tools uh, that I've been using this entire time through the design process and showing you guys from Polycam to Revit to Enscape, how I use them to uh, communicate with the client and how insanely helpful they are with that communication process. The other aspect of it, which is kind of interesting, is as I was going through these 17 videos, it's, it's almost um, easy to forget the human aspect of the design process and so i'm hoping that um even though all these videos are very technical and on the revit and bim sense of using things i'm hoping that this brings it around to remember that yeah the, all this technical stuff is great but let's not forget that we're doing this because we're architects and we're designing spaces for people to live in um, and so i'm hoping this kind of brings those um together in this really neat uh a little episode for you guys and it's useful for that so definitely pay attention to how i'm using N Enscape, Polycam, Revit, all the tools we have. And then also just pay attention and remember that even though it was very technical uh, series, uh, there's humans involved. And so I think this was a kind of nice way to wrap it all up. So before we jump into the uh, meeting uh, with with my clients Alicia and Mark. I did want to thank uh, do a final thank you to RevitFamily.biz for sponsoring this entire series. Um, if you don't know by now, after watching the 17 episodes, or maybe you're jumping in on your first, RevitFamily.biz is a company that sells Revit families, uh, more specifically uh, residential based families such as cabinet families, windows and doors. So please head on over to RevitFamily.biz. There's a link below. There's a link above, um, and then use offer code 2022 Revit kid um, we're gonna roll the clip for one final time of this season and then we're gonna jump right into my client presentation with alicia and mark I got a couple things to show you guys. Uh, looking for some reactions and some dialogue. Um, I, I'm, I am definitely gonna have to come back out, check a couple things. Um, you know, once, once we sort of decide on a on a direction and, and sort of verify a couple measurements and stuff. But I really wanted to just get your feedback on on initially where 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 I'm at right now and and see see what you guys think. So I also didn't want to just blindly send you this stuff. So after, you know, after we we chat here, I will, uh, you know, I'll send over a PDF as well as some. Uh, some live sort of model stuff that you can spin around and look at and whatnot. But I wanted to make sure that I presented it to you with context before just blindly sending you the stuff. So, so, so what I came up with is um, initially I had two sort of dramatically different options um, for the cabinet layouts. But over time, I sort of really, really leaned towards one. And then within those cabinet options, I sort of had two, two, two options of, of what to do with those cabinets. So I'll show you that in a second. But what I figured I'll do is I'll walk through this sort of 3D, 3D rendering of it first. Um, and then I have some elevations and plans and whatnot, and we could sort of just talk through it. But uh, just give you an idea of sort of um, what I'm thinking as far as taking into account, um, you know, a lot of the important pieces to you guys, including the lighting, the, you know, taking advantage of the view and, and all the good stuff. So. So anyways, without further ado, um, this is a view from the 
from the mudroom looking into uh, the existing kitchen. Um, as you can see, sort of, you know, the the bland old cabinets, not a ton of detail on them, but just, just to give you a little context of, of, of what's there. Um, and then this is kind of the, the current option one, we're going to call it. So, and I wanted to do it this way. So hopefully you guys can sort of see the, the, the difference between the two. That's um, wild. Far, <laughs> pretty wild. Oh right? my gosh. It's so different. <laughs> Isn't it wild? And, and so, so what I'll do is I'll run through the options and some of the views and, um, and then I can sort of explain the actual work that's involved to get at this point. Cause it's actually not, you know, again, I'm trying, I'm trying to, to figure out how to, how to get it to make this dramatic impact without having a ton of, a ton of uh, work to do. But um, so we can run through the actual work, but just to sort of give you an idea um, of what it is. So what I'll do is I'll do this first option, um, um, which just to let you know, the, the big difference between the option here is the sink. Notice how it's in the island here. Um, yep. So option one is the sinks in the island and the range is off against the back wall, which is facing your driveway. And so you'll see a couple different views where we where we see that that coming into play. Actually, I could probably just jump over um, to view two from let's do view two from half bath. No view two from new window corner. Let's just zip over there. Um, so you could see on the back wall, um, the range uh, is sort of uh, in, in the middle there um, and then adding some windows, you know, again, taking advantage and trying to maximize as much light as possible. But you'll notice mm -hmm. in this view, Mark, the one thing you don't see is what? The columns, right? <laughs> so so uh, taking advantage of the fact that those slanted 45 degree three foot columns are, are pretty obstruction with view and light and, and sort of rearranging things that way. Um, so mm -hmm. the big difference between the two options is actually flipping the the kitchen and the range or sorry the the sink and the range from the island uh to, to the back and the the real advantage there um the really the only advantage there is and i'll flip that real quick so you can see is there's a potential of having much more glass on the back side but obviously now you're you're, you're pulling in the the column into play right you could see the column there in the center window um obviously mm -hmm. when you have a when you have a range you know, you don't necessarily want to range against glass, but then it's an opportunity to put something like a, a, a tile or whatever, a backsplash, something something nice behind it. So those are essentially the two options. Um, so I'll just show you another couple of views so you can see the before and after, because I think it's helpful. Um, actually, even from this one, if you wanted, I could go to the existing. So you can kind of see we're actually kind of sitting next to the cabinet in the corner there. And there's your uh, <laughs> there's your your lovely, your favorite windows there, Mark, with the, the three <laughs> uneven windows. Um, so that's sort of existing, and this is this would be basically basically the transformation there. And then if I go, I'll go to one more view here from the half bath. So there's the view there. So if I flip back to existing, you could see. Remember, this is obviously what you're used to seeing right now. And then you know from the half bath, uh, new would be kind of like this. So you could see it's it's changing the entire feel and, and flavor of the space and. and and I toyed with a, a thousand different ways to, to put the cabinets um, as far as which walls, what made sense. And because of the angled walls and the slope ceiling and all of that happening, um, having yep. this sort of almost galley style um, really helps. Uh, it helps a lot, um, especially because that's the low side. That's sort of the dark side, so to speak. Um, and then it also if it, it it pulls your eyes towards the view right which with your house that's mm -hmm. you know that, that that's the direction you want everyone looking really at your house right it's that way um so it's kind of when you think about it it's kind of utilitarian stuff on the left hand side all the beautiful stuff on the right hand side and then the island becomes sort of the centerpiece around it um i didn't have any i couldn't find any components that matched your your awesome fan chairs but so i just threw a chair a generic chair in there but <laughs> but you can imagine those are your those are your chairs that you guys have there and then i'll, I'll just show one more view just to give you a sense of what that looks like you know from the sink looking out um you know me, me personally I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of the sinks in the island the only downfall with the sinks in the island is obviously sinks can become kind of messy over time and you know you might have dishes in them on the sides and stuff uh you know so, so you know there's, there's thoughts there as far as you know what you typically see at a sink um but obviously you could put the dishwasher next to it and, and sort of you know keep it keep it clean that way you know the um the option two would have the range here which you know there's there's multiple things you can do when there's the range here and we talked about this when i was there you can do um you can do a pop-up vent um you can do you can make the vent uh, a fixture which a lot of you know 50s 60s houses had that sort of interesting major sort of vents in the in the middle of the space obviously that would block view and light and so 
um, you know, there's, there's, there's obviously pros and cons to either one of those. And so um, what I'll do real quickly is I'll, I'll flip off of uh, two point and then, so this is, this I can zoom around in to just sort of show you guys and talk a little bit more about um, some of the things going on. Um, so the table you see here is, you know, it is essentially the same size as the table you have. Um, so it does leave a little room for, for expanding. I know, I think you said there's a couple leaves to it, right? Um, yeah. yeah. And so because of the angles, um, you know, it, it obviously leaves, leaves a lot of, um, you know, uh, interesting spaces if we try playing, playing with, with putting it, um, let's say on this angle or on the angle over there. Um, you'll notice one big change over here is by pulling the cabinets away from this. Um, and let me flip back to existing so we can, by pulling the cabinets away from this, we can use the same openings and pull the, pull the glass down to the, down to the floor if we want, um, which right. I think is, is a huge, I mean, you could see it here, how, how, how you know, how different, how different that changes this corner of the space. Um, and, and, you know, it takes full advantage of the fact that you've got, you know, this is where you want the view to be. This is where you want the light to be. And so by pulling the cabinets away from it, pulling everything away from it, um, you kind of create this big sort of glass, you know, glass wall across. We it. also open up a whole wall for, as you've got there, the heat. Yep. Yeah. You'll notice I have the, the heat down. I, I showed just, just for, cause we were talking about it, you know, just to, just to get a sense of, of what we could do there and how much space, you know, now you have those two end walls, which you could use for the, for the radiant heat exactly uh, along the baseboards there. Um, I did not expect this, but I really like it. <laughs> I was, I, you know, I, cause you know, the, the initial, when you guys were sort of laying it out and walking through it, obviously, you know, you had a thought in mind in this peninsula. And so I was playing with some of those ideas. Um, but like I said, and, and what I could do is I could, I could flap over to the floor plan so you can get a sense of. Where's um, so the pantry? So pantry wise, um, there isn't any um, as far as a tall, full pantry. Um, so, you know, I initially was playing with the idea of of where, um, you know, end walls or how what, what it came down to is. And this is where I was curious to see what you guys thought of. Let me just pull this back to the to the um, the one with the range here, you know, I was playing with the idea of trying to grab as much window space as we can here and how much that utility wall um, or how much this tall utility area, do, uh, you know, works versus it. But for example, um, you know, by, by getting rid of this angle here, there's a potential, even this little, little shack here, there's a potential, or there's even a potential of, you know, if, if you want to reduce the windows, oops, sorry, get out of the face there, <laughs> you know, reducing windows, we can, we can, you know, build it into some, of uh, some of these areas over here and make this a, a three full heighted space, et cetera. Um, you do have, I will tell you that this is more counter space, uh, storage wise than you have currently. Plus up here, this is all cabinet space. This is not a, yeah, I noticed that at the top, that's all. Yes. Yeah, so, so I, I, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, there's, there's different ways that you can play right these upper cabinets and um i really like this it's also kind of it is a little mid-century if, if if uh um you know if you look at some of the the 60s and 50s houses they had actually a lot of times you'd see these upper cabinets that had the pegboard uh wood i don't know if you've seen that uh, in some in some uh, older but um but i kind of like the contrast and then yeah this whole thing these are all lift up the way i'm showing them are kind of lift ups they can be pull outs they can be you know doors whatever you want them to be but that whole thing up there is storage space it's not a, it's not a soffit. Right. Obviously, obviously, uh, in above this one, you know, you'd want to have the, <laughs> the, the duct, but you know, other than that, you know, all that space up there is storage space now. And this way you're getting a ton of storage space, probably more than you would if we did typical wall cabinets. Um, and, and now you're still getting, you're still getting all the window space. Cause if you think about right. a wall, if we did walls cabinets here, they'd come down to this point. Maybe you'd want them to go all the way up to the ceiling, so then you're getting a little more room there. But you know that that's that's kind of what helps with the with the open feel, I think, of of the of the setup. Mm. Right, like right now, I think that's all that would be all soffit space for you guys. Um, I'll send this over to. This is the current. These are sort of plans and elevations of it, um, so you can just sort of see see how it how it kind of lays out in the space. A couple of things you'll notice, and this is, um, I mean, actually, you know what? Let's. Let's just let's just quickly uh, uh, thoughts on this before we move on to any other topics. What do, what do you guys think? I know the first I, time seeing it, I know there's oh. a lot here, but I'm just initial reactions. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's kind of like when you did this the last time is like, I wasn't. Yeah, I didn't expect this. I like the 
I like the table being like all in front of the glass. Mm -hmm. I really like then. And if you throw those doors open and we have the outside table out there as well, you kind of got. And the, and there is the option um, for, for, for these to be doors as well, or, or vice versa. It kind of made sense to me to keep these as doors right now, just because you mm -hmm. have that, you know, the, the open canopy space and whatnot. But, um, but this is wide enough to also be a set of doors. So instead of windows, you could even do another set of sliding doors here if you wanted or, or something like that. You know, there's, there's opportunity Yeah, we there. probably wouldn't. We looked at, see, we did that downstairs and we found out that we only ever use one door anyway. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's funny because you see like nano walls and these big opening walls and all these magazines, but it's like, they don't live in Connecticut. <laughs> like, right. like in, in, in San Diego where there's no bugs and no humidity, maybe that makes sense. But like <clears throat> in Connecticut, you have like three days out of the year where you might want to open an entire wall to the inside of your house all day long you know what i mean and what's the what's the distance from the end of the counter to the wall there oh it's, it's not huge i was just thinking that that wall where you have the big piece of art there's obviously a lot you could do shelving wise there too mm -hmm. i don't think we'll do it i mean three i'm and, sure that's three and a I half mean... and then the other side is probably three three and a half as well um three so you know i, I try to make it something i mean that's a that's your typical walking space in a home. So, you know, the pinch point of each one it should be, will never be less than three, basically. Yeah. And just zoom out a little bit more for me. Yeah, sure. So where we have that, the bench now I, in the mm -hmm. far left in that yep. entryway, that corner there, we can yep. put uh, so, uh, like a, a triangular bench. Yep. And, so so and you'll notice one thing I'm doing here, and this is I wanted to make sure I got some feedback first before we talk. You know, there's there's some open ended things that I wanted to get your opinions on. One is the you know the half bath. I I haven't done anything in there as far as just sort of um, I looked at it, demoed it, and, and I have a couple inspiration pieces that I could probably show you. Um, I can just send an email of it of, of sort of. I mean, as we mentioned, there's not much you can do in the uh, in there other than sort of finishes and maybe changing the type of sink and stuff like that. Um, but over here, you'll notice that the fridge and this area is actually starting to encroach in this space. Um, and I actually removed, you know, I removed the little wall segment and made this open. And so I know, um, Alicia, you were mentioning, you know, this closet as, as you know, being something you wanted to keep um, as far as a closet is concerned. Um, you know, one of the thoughts I had was if if you still want, um, you know, that that sort of sit down mudroom. I'm thinking that that's a great space to have it as far as just a bench with with hooks and and you know it doesn't it really it's just removing the doors almost and, yeah. and, and making it pretty. Um, I actually did that here in my house. It, it turned out great. But uh, but I know you were talking about keeping that door because of the stuff that's in it. Um, but the the only reason I mentioned that is I think when you when you look at sort of the layout, um, obviously it's you know we all know that's an awkward space. But having it tucked to the side a little bit I think would be nice. Um, otherwise there is a little room over here. Um, you know, to have a, a, a hall tree or maybe a couple of hooks and a small little bench, even on this side too. It's not, you know, it's not, not the end of it. Oh, just... And we were thinking of that door being switched out for the, the similar to the one that's in the, the library where it's got the two panels either side mm -hmm. and then having glass in it. So it's like that will add more light there because you'll have glass panel door and then two right, panels right. either side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, over here, no. right? So then that yeah, would open so that up. Door, that would, that, that would main door more. would be glass mm -hmm. and then two glass panels either side so that you could light right. that up. Right. So then if that's the case, then yeah, maybe maybe it's a, a, a hall tree or something. And then and then there is the potential, like I said, that, that you know, taking the doors off of this, putting a nice a nice bench with some, you know, you could do wood slats on the wall with some, some, some hooks and stuff like that. I mean, you know, uh, and that way it's kind of tucked off to the side, but it's accessible and you can fit you can fit a lot of a lot of stuff in it. So you know, one the of the things we did talk maybe, about honestly. when after you left, Jeffrey, mm -hmm. was that that closet is pretty big. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't measure how deep it was. That was one of the things that uh, I just drew it. It at actually could two. be a little bit bigger. So I think there's yeah. potential there to because behind there's the machine for the the ducting. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think there's a little bit of room there if we wanted to get an extra half foot or so. Mm -hmm. And I know Alicia wants a full pantry. We could literally do. Oh yeah, you, you can know, do the you whole still thing. Still have, mm -hmm. you know, the the door facing the door so that you mm -hmm. can get coats and stuff in. But then on the side, almost have a pantry coming into the kitchen the other way. Mm -hmm. So coming into the, oh, the yeah, left from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you could still kind of have a, a quite a significant pantry and mm -hmm. that closet because that's that's it's big. But I think we potentially also overstuff it too. 
<laughs> well, we all we all overstuff closets, right? <laughs> it's just what we do. Um, yeah, so I drew I drew this at two feet deep. Um, I didn't I didn't tape stick a tape in there, so I got to check. That's just your typical closet depth. Um, so this yeah. could be a little deeper, but yeah, to your point, we, when we looked out there, you know, may, maybe there's the ability to to sort of use this space a little. It's bit. a refactor that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, how, how much cabinet space is this compared to like the average kitchen that you do? That's that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, I mean, some of the places you know, around here, they probably have kitchens the same size as our house. Yeah, I mean, there's there, there's definitely a, a a decent amount of cabinet space. I mean, when when how you does it, I mean, about... how does it factor against the current layout? I mean, I know the current layout isn't even optimized. I think this is much more efficient because there's no corners anymore. Right, there's no corners anymore. Um, you know, like I said, we're taking advantage of the upper, um, and so uh, you know, if you and you're also at... the dog kennels have got you know across the top now well, that's kind of place my cabinets in. yeah so yeah so and then you can see I, I put the two kennels over here um sort of you know off to the side but still there and you actually still have drawer space potentially above them uh, depending on the height and whatnot um of, of the kennels themselves um so i mean you could see you know you and, and you know i just threw in sort of my thoughts of of cabinets as far as drawers versus pan obviously you know any of the, this arrangement as far as this being a cabinet this being doors this being drawers all of that can obviously be modified that's that's when you start that's when kitchens start you know you know there's there's so much stuff you can do there but i'm just to give you a sense of size and and whatnot i mean you could see you know these are i think these are all around third three feet to three and a half feet so you've got one two three four of those um you got these two sets of drawers here in the overhead it's like so i think yeah. it's i think it's significantly more than what we have on now. the other side you also have under the sink you have one to the right of this you have drawers over here and then you have above this microwave above the cabinet and then all of this stuff above so it's definitely more than you have now you know how it compares to the size of the house you know that's you know <laughs> that's like a it. yeah that's a it's a whole and you can see you know the the typical upper cabinets are one feet deep so that's what you're seeing up here they're usually a little mm -hmm. shallower but above the stove, the microwave and, and stuff, you know, they get to be a little deeper. So you get a little more room up there. Um, but those are also double cabinets up there for for storage, too. Right. And the microwave. I like it. Yeah, I like this layout. It, it, it's it's there. I, I, I'm telling I, I, I did sketch quite a few layouts and it is it's a challenging space because of that angle. Right. And then not to mention the angle, but you also get the swoop of the ceiling, which, yep. you know, when you think about upper cabinets um you kind of had two options it's you pull them down below that or you, you expect one of the upper cabinets to sort of be custom or you pull them away from it you know what i mean it's 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 sort of and then also where it leaves the table you know the the kitchen table or the dining room table itself is is obviously you know interesting so the only other option i had was one where um we sort of go on this side um and then put some put some um cabinets over here but then now you're talking about the door and you have to pull the cabinets away from the exterior wall so everything gets a little smaller and this is definitely in my opinion it's it's the the most the most storage you'll get out of this kitchen essentially right okay. um, and and like i said the two options the only difference between these two options is the the range and the reason i really wanted to explore it was to see what it looked like to have um all this glass uh above uh the the casework which you know, something something unique, but also something something really nice. And it reminded me of one of one of the one of the pictures that you guys shared in the inspiration. Um, actually, I could probably pull this up. Let me see. Uh, and the in, the inspiration stuff um, had had a similar type of thing. I think it was looking into like a a garden of some sort. But uh, actually, this this is one of the ones I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> even though even though this is looking into like a Japanese courtyard or something, but. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, "That's kind of neat. Maybe there's opportunity to 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 do something kind of like that and and have this living wall." And then um, there's another architect that I'm a I'm a huge fan of that um, had a, an interesting house that I could uh, I'll pull up on the other side here. Um, so so the one thing I need to come out and do is um, I didn't I didn't detail measure the the 45 degree columns, and so obviously those ones on the exterior we want to make sure we uh, we lay those out correctly because you know on this on this option here um obviously you know the, the idea is those 45s are behind the solid space right so the, they're behind this and they're behind that and so so you're taking full advantage of the the windows are basically centered between them essentially yeah and i guess if you have the stove on the other side you don't get a uh 
you know, the tap isn't there anymore. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I didn't I didn't go too far down the rabbit hole. I don't know if there's one that you could do like an island mounted or like even one that like comes up. I've never I've, I've never seen them. But yeah, it's that's not a, it's not an essential feature. Yeah. I kind yeah. of like the if you switch back to the one where it has the sink there. I mean, it's kind of a question of are you spending more time oh, looking sorry. at the view when you're cooking or when you're cleaning? Mm. That's true. And I would say, uh, I guess that depends. And on I prefer every the stove and... over here simply because it's easier to duct and have a, a really decent ducting system. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the island, then you end up with this. Yeah. And so the other thing too is, um, and obviously we could play with any of this stuff. The other thing is the reason the sink is kind of over this side and we could adjust it. So it's more centered is that if I put it where the stove was, now you're staring back at your columns that you love, <laughs> you know? So, so, so we kind of have to rearrange this, uh, you know, the idea was at least if, I'm, if if you're standing here, you're looking through the columns because that's what you're looking out at. Right. And we can refine that as we get closer to it. Oh, I like it. Of course. Of course. Wow. It's a totally different take on it. <laughs> that's a good thing, right? <laughs> no, it's great. I, I And I think it just gives a, I don't know, just a lot more functional use for the kitchen, really. Mm. Mm. All right. So, uh, so yeah, so, so that's, that's kind of where it's at. Um, you know, I, uh, I guess, you know, I, I, you guys definitely get, have, take as much time as you want to chew on it. Um, I wanted to just get your initial reactions as well as, uh, um, you know, give you some context of, of where it's at. Um, I guess what I could do real quickly is just to give you a sense of, of what, you know, what it means impact, impact wise. Um, so if I, uh, let me go just so you get a sense of sort of demo and, and whatnot. Um, obviously all the cabinets go, um, <laughs> you know, the windows go, these walls would go, um, you know, in this corner, which is your, your, your window corner, obviously the windows would go. And then ideally you try and keep the opening and the headers. If not, <clears throat> depending on the windows you choose, you know, the wall just goes, but, um, and then on the corner here, you know, if you noticed, I, I, I removed, this is, I think this was a 45 degree wall. Um, it might not be, but either way, sort of squaring up against this and that's kind of where it ends up. And so option, that's option um, one. Option two would obviously be the same thing. Just over here, you'd have a little more uh, work with the openings because they would be they would be bigger. But um, that's pretty much it for the the impact wise. It's just a, a lot more. It feels like a lot more counter space. Oh, it's definitely a lot more counter space. I mean, you could see, you know, the space, you know, the, the efficiency of these of this space in here. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, when you, if you were to, if you were to take the square footage of this, you know what I mean? That's kind of unusable right. workspace that you're walking between them. You know, it's a, it's a, that's a challenge. Um, the other thing too is, you know, in, in, in kitchen design, there's sort of a, there's a couple rules, um, that, that, that we go by. And, um, one of them is, um, the space between the, uh, the sink uh the stove and then the refrigerator and then there's a triangle you draw and that triangle mm -hmm. is supposed to be sort of a under a certain amount of, of feet essentially because that's when you think about it right. when you're cooking and, and doing stuff that's the walk and so you know that that's kind of a little guide and 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 i bet if you know if you measured yours you'll see it's actually it's a pretty big distance you know that that, that you have to walk yeah. to get over to the fridge well, also that door to the bathroom is a is a slider not a not an opening door it's a pocket door yeah pocket door yeah I'll switch that out now. So did you strategically put the kennels where you did because then we wouldn't be opening any drawers and someone can't walk through there? That was the thought. Was was putting them, you know, that that space as as you know from the big cabinets, right? That's a, that's a space where it's a little challenging to 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 use all the time. So I figured it yeah, would be something be sliding doors too. They just yeah. Yeah, they'll be, be sliders. Sliding they, doors. Yeah, exactly. So 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 potentially now, you know, put put the the either the things that we can adjust like you're saying there or or less used or something like that um because you know that that's what we would sort of put over there so that's kind of what the thought was there for sure yeah there's not much you can do with that room <laughs> yeah i mean like, like i said i i i have and i'll pull, i'll just send them to you guys what, what i found you know i had some ideas of just some unique but but really it's just a matter of you can have some fun in there with like a unique sink or something like that um you know, instead of being like a built in casework, it could be like a unique pedestal or like an interesting sort of more industrial mid century type of look. But really, there's not, you know, I wouldn't necessarily put the toilet anywhere else and it wouldn't be really worth the amount of effort and money to do it. Um, so, you know, to me, really, the big change could be, 
instead of having this, you know, dated built in, you know, uh, uh, casework that's there, you know, doing something with, with the sink and, and, and that's right. really, and then obviously finishes, you know, finishes or finishes, but, um, you know, that, that really would probably be your best bet. I mean, it just, it just wouldn't, you know, I was even playing with like, what if we flip the toilet? It's like not, not worth it. And then not to mention the, the, the pocket door, you know, like you'd walk into yeah, the toilet. I mean, it's, and... it's about the, all you could do there. The only thing I was thinking is maybe putting in a slightly bigger window. No, yeah, we which... don't need to do that. <laughs> if it was any other room, I guess, but I mean, does it need to, you know, you know, one of the thoughts mm -hmm. I had was, you know, do you, you, you can. Well, it needs a new window anyway, because that window's busted, but that's not mm -hmm. on the whole that's yeah irrelevant. yeah well um, it has like louvers and stuff on it right now but yeah i mean that's really and so so I'll, I'll i'll pull together some of the ideas i had just i've seen over time that i've saved of interesting sort of powder room sinks but otherwise yeah i don't you know <laughs> there's there's not unless unless we start really not nah, i mean there's really not much because even if we said let's remove this wall and try and make a, a you know make the wall on this side you're still dealing with a right you know this this triangle which is <laughs> there's not even a right angle in it you know it's 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 it, it is what it is right yeah, yeah no i'm more interested i'm more interested in making the most out of the view onto the deck that's what mm -hmm. i that was the goal and i think you hit that yeah yeah and i think and and, and i think all this stuff will help with the lighting you know i'm showing very and, and obviously all this can you know all this is just me my initial thoughts and you know, I'm showing quite a few pot, you know, pot lights. I'm showing an interesting sort of mid-century pendants over there, and then one there. You know, all of this stuff, you know, that you can play with, but all of it's going to help with the with the lighting in there. Not to mention, especially the. the I mean, just having those what in. one, two, three, four floor to ceiling windows would make a oh, radical God, difference. Yeah. Oh yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I almost and the back like... side. The back side is your north. Is your pretty much north elevation I mean, you know, true north but right it's pretty much your north elevation and so you do get diffused light through there which you know does help as well it, you never you don't get direct sunlight but the, you know light comes in back there so it, it all helps with the lighting for sure i definitely like opening that back wall up more that's awesome hmm. so um so i the, the 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 two things i so i'm gonna send you all the information so you guys can uh, let me stop sharing for now um, so, so you guys can chew on it, um, you know, write, write down your ideas. We can, we can meet again, or I'll come up there next time. Cause I do want to, like I said, I want to verify, especially the locations of the 45s, um, uh, those columns, yep. uh, definitely want to verify those. Yeah. I also wanted to kind of, while you're out to do the measure out the behind the closet space to see how much room we've got around the machinery mm -hmm. there too. Yep. Yep. Right. Cause yep. essentially we're going to do a full demo of that entire space, ceilings, walls, everything. Mm -hmm. Cause we need to re-insulate it anyway. Okay. Um, so if we're taking out all of the drywall, especially on that machine room side, we potentially could push it back another half a foot or so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about you're talking about the the demising wall between the garage and the kitchen. Yeah, all of that's okay. going to need to be reinsulated. Re so okay. We could we could look at how much room we've got there because we don't use that first bay anyway because mm -hmm. because of the way the wall is shaped. Mm -hmm. So. Providing we're not doing radical changes to that machine components, we we can move it a few inches here or there just to like if we wanted to bust out a bit more space. Right. right, right what right. I would like to do with that is make it a completely built-in closet. So mm -hmm. we ha we have no other closets for coats, so that yeah. can't be like a mudroom. It just got it, got it. Because you're, you're talking, have, you're no talking year round, year round coat storage type of stuff. Yeah. yeah okay. So got it, got what it. I then I can send you like a potential. I gave Mark a drawing. I don't know if he still has it, but mm -hmm. instead of having doors mm -hmm. where the bottom space is just wasted, like we mm -hmm. don't, you know, we hang all the coats and then nothing gets used on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of having like complete built-ins where, mm -hmm. you know, there's one cabinet for like okay. tall coats. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, doors that open that are just all the coats and then there's drawers and that's where you can put, I, I had it all drawn out, like how it could be, but mm -hmm. that's what I think I want to do with that space. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, well, don't forget also that we could, if you're doing something, if you're reconfiguring that whole section there and we get a little bit more space, that's also where a massive pantry pullout could be. Because it, be. it pulls out into empty space. It could right. be, yeah. It's right next to the stove or sink, right? It could be. Mm -hmm. yeah um, that that i'd say that whole i'll share again the you know this this whole area here oops sure you know th this whole area here this whole triangle including the closet you know th that there's there's lots of opportunity there you know there's, there's yeah that's what i mean is i think yeah. if you come out we could really really look at 
Because realistically, I don't think that's a load-bearing wall, right? Because of the way the trusses run. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I'm I fairly don't think so it's either. Not because I think the trusses run, you know, obviously across the top here. So I think you can remove... We could get very creative and work with our HVAC guy in. Because the HVAC needs to be redone in that room anyway. Mm -hmm. And they're the same guys that did the air conditioner that's behind there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And so that's... So I'm just saying, I think there's some stuff we could do there to maximize coat storage. Yep. As well as seeing if there are options for us to lay, do have a like a pretty significant pantry. Because I know there's at least two feet either side of the machine room there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which we could work on. And also we can push it out. Into this space if you wanted to. Yeah, that whole space there is never going to have a car in it because it just won't fit. Right. Okay. Um, but does that make sense to have like a built-in where there's like, shorter yeah uh, i i think uh you know the, the only yeah no the, the only thing i would say about that is um are, are you are you saying would you like the built-in to be accessible from from this space or walking into a room and then the built-ins are there um, no accessible from that space like it. the doors yeah. be where they are now got but it, it. it's they're not huge closet doors where you don't use any of the space on the bottom mm-hmm mm-hmm Right, um, right, and, and so that what I was getting at there is, is you know, if if you do built-ins where you walk into like a walk-in closet, you know, and then they're there, obviously now you you need to account for the space that you're standing in the room to open. No, no, you still be that. You, you access it all from the room. Yeah, you access yeah. it all from the room. Got it, got it. Okay, so it's, just, that, it's just that bottom half would be drawers or mm -hmm. cabinets or yeah. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I like that. Your shoes, and then like you only open the top, the top doors to get the coats mm -hmm. out. It's just. Right now, it's just like wasted space in there yeah. on the bottom. Yeah, and I would I, say I, that corner, that corner there where you have the door, I think it feels like it's smaller than it actually is. That that far corner that you're looking mm -hmm. at right now. Mark wants to put a cabinet there. Is it's because it's a, a wasted space. It's easy enough to make a triangular bench there, and then potentially mm -hmm. a cabinet above it. I think I might not have had a great scan back there, so, but I think I had enough. Let's see. Do we have to go to a four thirty? Yeah. yeah so that corner right there yeah kind of behind the door where that bucket is mm -hmm. you know the so door behind I, there like the if you imagine be. like there's a, a specialized triangular upper yep and then a bench and then a shoe rack like there's a whole bunch of wasted space behind there mm -hmm. where it's pretty deep yeah it looks like maybe the door i might have the door off a little bit now i'm looking at this so i'll, I'll, I'll double check that um so then you have, you know, potentially a bunch of storage back in that corner and messing with that cupboard. And so there's a lot of things to do. I got a bunch. I got to jump to a 430. I'll yep. let Alicia cover you. Yep. No problem. I will. Uh, I will send you guys the stuff and then we can uh, coordinate one. I'll, I'll come back over. That way you can have time to uh, review all that stuff. And then I'll go out I'll go over to measure and then we can talk about, you know, moving it forward. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Bye. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye. So there you have it. Episode 18 client presentation i hope you guys really enjoyed following along with this series i hope you guys get to see the next season as the project moves along where's the project stand right now today well i did go back and um, design some built-in closets and and sort of some pantry ideas um, for alicia for, for the back corner there and at the moment they're actually in the process of trying to get a contractor on board um, even using the the documentation that i have so far um, in order to work with me to develop the construction documents and the, the project itself. It may seem a little unusual um, in the residential realm to hire a contractor during the SD phase while I'm making documents, um, but I actually find it extremely helpful and useful, especially when you get the right contractor on board to be a partner during this process to help really uh, validate the pricing, the budget, the schedule, and all the information that we've got building into the construction documents instead of after the fact. So that's where we're at now. Um, I'm hoping that the next season of this series is um, me showing you guys how I pulled together a set of construction documents for this project. But until then, thank you guys so much for following along. If you enjoy this series, please subscribe to the channel, comment below, share it with your friends, and I'll see you guys Thursday nights at 9 on BIM After Dark Live. I've also got some other um, content coming up soon. So see you guys soon.